Excellent opening of the show. 9-13, 9-14. We've got Tanner Bybee and the Guardians at minus 118. And then we have basically an undecided game for the Tigers at plus 108. Total of 6.5 with some juice to the over. Excuse me, at minus 115. B-Dub, I think it's going to be some sort of combination probably of Holt and then Reese Olsen. We could see Bo Briesk as well, who pitched a few innings. They're going to do some sort of as what they call it, pitching chaos in Detroit, and that's what they're going to go with here tonight. Bybee was pretty good that first start. I don't have an official play on this one. If I had to lean, I think Cleveland keeps the series going. Obviously, do or die for them with Detroit up 2-1. What are we doing? Guardians, Tigers. Yeah, I think this is a, a good opportunity to use. I think the bet, the team with the better bullpen, uh, a little bit better hitting uh, in the Guardians in a parlay. So I put them first five base winner parlay. And, uh, you know, it's interesting what, what Detroit's doing with the bullpen. And you wonder, because they're using the same guys, they're calling on these same guys every game. And you wonder, maybe it's time the, the, the Guardians... Uh, figure it out and maybe they won't but if you look at the k minus bb for the playoffs and this is kind of for me and this is overall this includes the starting pitching as well but like with detroit you, you almost it's almost interchangeable so if you look at k minus bb percentage which for me is the if you used one metric to kind of evaluate how teams are doing in the playoffs from a pitching standpoint this is the one i would use uh cleveland's number one 22.1 percent k minus bb percentage and then it goes padres yankees Philly and Detroit. So Detroit's kind of middle of the pack from a playoff team. Uh, and, and I think that, so what does that mean? Well, the, 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 the guardians aren't scoring any runs. The Astros sure didn't in that series, but I think that their time is coming. I think it's, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things regression is about to happen, and, and hopefully it happens today. Going with, with, with Bybee, his numbers were really good last game uh, versus the same team. Uh, I th- thought about the strikeout market. It's just not a, a market that uh, I endeavor in for the most part. Uh, I think it needs to be modeled a certain way, and I just have not had the opportunity to build the model. But looking at interesting strikeout offensive percentages for Detroit – And if you look at them, they're 29th uh, in in strikeout percentage from a bad way at 28.3%. And this is an aggregate of the last 150 plate appearances for each guy in the lineup. So I think that's a pretty good gauge. Uh, I wouldn't be uh, opposed to anybody uh, trying to to make money playing the uh, the Bybee strikeouts today, Kyle. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm in my DFS lineup. I can't decide. Do I play Garrett Cole or Tanner Bybee in DFS today? I'm still trying to decide. Corby, what do we do with this one here? I think I like your approach. We've got a low total here of six and a half. What are we doing with this one? Yeah, I'm going to take, uh, I've done this a few times. I'm going to take the mm-hmm. the neither team to score five runs minus 110. Uh, pretty much as simple of a handicap as you can get. Like, um, this is going to be do or die. Like, you're going to see pitchers pulled fast. Like, we even saw Alex Cobb yesterday pulled after three innings. Uh, and he looked great. I mean, he gave up two runs, but like, he looked fine. His stuff was breaking. He looked good. This is just kind of the nature of playoff baseball. Um, you can't allow these runs unless they're in the very start of the game. Then you can kind of like shell off. But uh, I just don't see either of these teams score. You, you brought up like Jose yesterday was getting walked and the rest of the team couldn't do anything. Like, I don't see either of these teams and just go, man, I, like, I, I worry about this game having high variance to the over. If anything, yeah. it would be the counter opposite of that. Um, so neither team to score five runs in what you would assume is a pretty sharp and efficient uh, playoff baseball type of market. Uh, I think this is a really good price to play this. Yeah, Scott D says, how is that minus 110? And I completely agree when you have a total of six and a half. I mean, it's one of the lower totals. We weren't getting totals like that at all during the regular season. You get a total of six and a half. You're not expecting any team to get five runs in that that preview. So I, I like that play. So for purposes of the show, Corby's locking in race to five, neither and he's taken that at minus 110. And then we got the first leg of the base winner parlay today. We've got the Guardians on the money line. Gary Sween says, Team America World Police. Have you seen that movie, Corby? Made, it's from the makers of South Park. They're puppets. Have you seen it, B-Dub? Have you watched no. Team America World Police? Absolutely hysterical, wildly inappropriate. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Definitely, definitely uh, worth it. Uh, there's I'm, a sign I'm not a puppet guy. But if it's one of your favorites, I'll, I'll have to check it out. I'm, I'm telling you, it's from the makers. Of, it's it's so dumb. It's funny, and it's it's absolutely. I don't uh, know. I think I think there's a I think there's a new podcast. Bet US sponsored uh, a film a podcast, film reviews. Yeah, just, 
because these guys, was, the chat box is like really into it, and, I, and, and Kenny's really good. I'm I'm lousy at film f- film trivia and film knowledge uh, comparatively to you guys, uh, but you know, put Kenny in there. You got the you got the film podcast. Just don't, and if you're ever, you're not gonna want to watch gonna, it with someone easily offended. The team they if you're easily offended, you're not gonna love Team America: World Police. Let's just say that. But it is one of the best movies of all time. Oh, I have seen that movie. I have seen that movie. And she craps uh, on it. There's the puppet craps yeah, yeah, on her. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, she I've goes, if you could tell say, me that you would never die, I would make love to you right now. And the puppet goes, I promise I will never die. And <laughs> they get after it. And the puppet craps on the other puppet. There's some real inappropriate stuff there. Uh, it's funny, in my, uh, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you're going to tune into the BetUS um, film show, do, do not, and this is my only request, do not reference Rotten Tomato scores. Uh, they, should be, they should be thrown deep into the dumpster. I'm with, no. I'm with you on that, Corby. You know, my wife's all about those, uh, those reviews They're and so stuff. They're so trash. And, and how many times have you seen a show that's gotten a lousy review and you've liked, or conversely, how, time, how many times have you seen a show with a good review that you hated? So I don't know. I don't know. Rick, I'm, I'm Rick with you Thompson. on that. Rick Thomason in the chat box trying to trigger me. I'm not going to let it happen. They tested the whole Rose and Jack on the door thing. When Jack tried to get on, they both fell off. That's because Rose is an idiot. Any normal person, they could have got on that damn door. Rose is a complete a selfish bitch, all right? And Jack could have got on that goddamn door. You're never never going to convince me differently. And then when you tell him I'm not going to let go, as soon as he dies, you just drop him. You just let him. You don't even bring his body to shore. Nothing. You literally say, I, you promise him as he's dying, I'll never let go. Oh, you're dead. Goodbye. Rose. It was all okay. an insurance scam. Rose is the biggest piece of shit in movie history. I will die on that hill. 